Hi, are you guys ready to make your embroidered felt bookmark with, this is what I call the pumpkin spice latte. Um, you could make it any beverage that you like, just something nice and warm to have on a cozy day while you're reading a wonderful book. Uh, one thing to notice is that because it's one piece of felt, you're going to see all the stitches on the back. Some people don't like that, that's a preference. You could uh, figure out probably a way to hide those um, maybe with another piece of felt and then maybe stitching the whole edges to make it a double thickness felt, uh, bookmark. I'm sure there's many other creative ways you could do that. You could probably cut out this little cup afterwards and then uh, I don't know if you could glue it on to a different section of the bookmark. Also, you could uh, probably uh, stitch your cup anywhere on the bookmark. You might even be able to fit it in this way. Uh, and so we're going to go ahead and get started. And I'm going to have you guys get started with the black thread so we can get the face anchored in for this piece of paper that it's traced on. This piece of paper is made by Sulky and it dissolves in water. I usually tear as much away as I can and then I find some pieces stuck underneath the thread. So I either like fish it out with tweezers or with the, the needle. But though if you soak it in the water, it will eventually uh, dissolve out. Sometimes you have to be like, I don't know, patient, give it a couple of soaks. It depends on how many stitches you have and we're going to be stitching with the six strands of thread instead of separating them and stitching with three or with two. Usually people embroider with less than six but I wanted the, the cup to be pretty bold. So I'm going to show you the eyes are going to be French knots so we're going to get started with the more harder <laughs> stitch out of all of them. So you oh uh, for this, because they're French knots, I did put a knot at the edge of the black thread. Uh, because if you don't do that with French knots, you could end up just pulling it out all the way. And Some people don't like to make French knots. It's not their favorite. I don't mind them. So that would be very, very frustrating to happen, I believe. So starting with your threaded needle, you're going to poke up through the back of your bookmark and you're going to try to find that eye and it can take a few tries, but that's okay. And I'm close enough, I feel like, to the eye, so I'm going to let it go there. And you might have a little trouble pu pulling your needle through the felt. Um, it could be a little stubborn, so I pulled it all the way through. I can trim this later if I want. I have the piece pinned down on felt. You could probably use a glue stick if you wanted to keep it adhered. Um, and it's usually washable too if you use a glue stick. So let me show you if I can show you up close how you do a French knot if you haven't made one before. So I'm right-handed. I don't know if it's different if you're left-handed. You will take the left hand of thread and your needle and you're going to wrap the thread around the needle. I only did it two times. You can do it more. If you do more, your eyes are going to be a little bit bigger. I'm kind of wondering why this one has a wonkier eye than this one. Like if I did wrap it around one extra time than the other eye. So that one does drive me just a little bonkers, but I'll get over it. Okay, so I have to do this close up to the where the thread is coming through the fabric. So I'm going to have to keep it down here and I'm going to give it a wrap two times. Now you're going to stick that needle right through the eye, very close to where you pulled your needle up. And then you're gonna hold tight with your left hand because it'll keep that knot tight. And then you're gonna push your needle through. And this is probably gonna get a little stuck because of the size of the eye of the needle. 
and you're gonna have to wrestle with it maybe a little bit use a thimble or for me I'm gonna just put it down and pull up okay so I got it through and I'm holding it tight with my left and I'm just gonna keep pulling and keep pulling you see that it's keeping the knot in place and there we have it kind of a big eye <laughs> and I'm gonna go and do the other eye same thing pull it through hopefully your eye of your needle is a little smoother to get through yours mine might be uh, I don't know a little small I'm not sure okay so I'm gonna wrap it again twice I'm gonna stab it back in the eye again poor little thing I'm gonna hold anchor that left and hopefully, maybe it'll go through a little. Nope. <laughs> I'm gonna pop it through the back. I don't think you'll have this trouble with any of the other uh, stitches that you do. It's only through the French knots, I believe. So I'm gonna keep pulling, keep pulling, and there's its eyes. Ooh, they look a little big. So this a little smile is gonna be fun because it's kind of a half lazy daisy so I'm gonna go up from the left I don't think it matters what side you go from uh, okay found it and then I'm gonna pull it through all the way up and now I'm gonna go to the other corner of the smile stick the needle back in and I'm not going to pull it, um, the thread, all the way through. I'm going to leave a loop. I'll show you in just a second. Okay, so it's up here. See, I'm not pulling all the way through. And then in the middle of the smile, uh, I want it to be as close to the middle as possible. And uh, you might have... Oh, <laughs> that wasn't even on the smile. Oh boy. Uh, okay, that's gonna do it for me. I'm gonna pull up and keep pulling all the way. Oh, look at that. It's like a magic smile. Now to anchor the smile, you're gonna go over on this side of the thread, um, the bottom of the smile, and you're just gonna pop it through and it's going to anchor it. So, and it's super tiny so you can barely see it. Okay, so there's its little cute smile and I'm just going to tie a knot in the back and finish that up. And then we're going to move on to the brown and that one it's just going to be straight stitches. They're called back stitches. you can start anywhere on your mug that you want it doesn't matter we're gonna save the little flecks of pumpkin spice for last so here we have our six strands of uh, pumpkin spice color nutmeg whatever you want to call it and I'm not going to tie a knot at the end of this one I think I'm gonna probably start close to the top um, Okay, so here is how we're going to do the back stitch. So don't pull it all the way through. You want to have a little bit of a tail. Uh, yeah, that's good enough for me. Yours could be a little bit longer, but it might get too tangled up. And then you're going to go to like the top, I guess you could say. It depends where you are. So in my next stitch, I should be able to catch my tail. So I'm going down from where I stitched. I'm gonna go like right around here. And your stitches, if you're new, might not be totally evenly spaced. Um, that's okay. You're gonna still feel accomplished because you made something. I think. I might pull it through here to get it locked in. Sorry. All right. And now I'm gonna go 
go up to this hole that I made my first stitch at. And pop it through. Okay, so let's get back. So you're gonna wanna always make sure that you're coming up from the back and that all your thread is on the same side. So go ahead and pull it up and go back to that hole from the last stitch, stitch down, pull through. Alright, now I'm gonna go up through the back another stitch on the back line. <laughs> All right. Then back to that bottom stitch. And then another one. So we're going to do this all the way around the mug the handle and the rim of the mug. Okay, so go all the way around and then do the handle and do the top or however order you're going to do it. Okay, and if you run out of thread, I'll show you what to do um, to pretty much like when you start started. You just want to tuck in the tail and um, from the end of your stitching and start, so you'll catch it. But if that happens, I'll just show you really quick. Well, here I am at the bottom of the mug. So you might wonder if it's gonna be tricky or not. So if you are, I will show you what you do. So that was my last stitch on the side here. Now I'm just gonna start over here. I'm just gonna pop up from the back, just like I've been doing, and then connect the bottom of it to the side of the mug. And there you have it. And I'm just gonna keep going and do it again. So here I am. I'm starting the handle, doing the outside, and then I'm gonna do the inside. And I'll probably be pretty close to being done with this thread by then. So I might start more for the, the rim of the mud, but I'm not too sure. So we're just still doing the back stitch. And uh, when we do the whipped cream, that's also going to be in back stitch. But the lovely little seasonings for your latte, those are also more French knots. But you don't have to do French knots. You can do just tiny little seed stitches, which is kind of like a back stitch, or uh, you can do X's, you can do, or have none. I mean, maybe you don't like the way they look, that's totally fine too. Sorry if this is um, not showing you very clearly. It's a little hard to focus. Uh, I want you to know too that when you do curve, stitches don't always come out. Um, the same size because if you did keep them pretty much the same size, they would look really flat. So usually you make them a little shorter going around curves and um, they just aren't usually the same size. It's, it's not the worst thing, but I know it's hard if you like everything to look super same. I know that stitching isn't, it can make some people crazy because they want all their stitches to look exactly the same. Okay, so I'm almost done with this. After I do this outside, I'm going to do the inside and uh, I'm getting short on thread, so I might have to show you what to do to change. Okay, so the handle is done. I think that I have enough to do just the rim of the mug. So I finished here. On the inside of the handle that was my last stitch I'm just gonna go ahead and go back up to the mug I don't think it'll be too big of a loop of thread 
but we'll find out. If it is, uh, I can change that up. So I'm going to connect these stitches. And look at the back and see if it's too big of a jump of thread. And I barely even notice. Okay, so I'm just going to go along the edge now with that back stitch. Okay, so here's the last stitch for the rim of the mug. I was just thinking, you know, you do not have to do the rim of the mug brown. You could probably do it whipped cream. Make it even more creamy, right? But I did mine in brown. There's no right or wrong. Okay, so here's my tail. You can knot it at this point, or if you want it to be pretty flat, just thread it behind your stitches and it'll secure them. Sorry, I nearly got caught. Okay, I'm just going in the same direction. So that'll do. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and give it a trim pretty close. I can trim it closer, I guess, if I want later. And now we're gonna go ahead and do the cream, uh, whipped cream in white. So again, with your white, I would say, um, you know, thread the end and catch it as you're stitching. You can do a knot, totally up to you. Um, I'm gonna do the outline of the whipped cream first and then I'm gonna go in and do the texture waves. Now also I was gonna say you could probably do the outline and then start ripping out the paper. It might be driving you nuts, you see all the holes you poked through it, it's kind of Swiss cheesy and uh, the wrinkles might be driving you nuts, even the noise, you could start ripping away um, but I would, um, I would leave it, um, I would do the waves of the whipped cream and then, um, probably that's when I would probably remove the paper and depending on how hard it is, especially in small areas, you will either be picking at it with a needle or tweezers or you're going to be wanting to soak it. So we'll find out and um, I can show you, but I'm gonna want to finish this up kind of quick for you guys. So it might be an experiment on your ends, but if I know, I'll let you know. And all right, so I'm gonna start, I think I'm gonna start over here and go this way. So I'm gonna probably start about, let's see if I can get there, right around here is where I wanna bring up my needle. It's so much fun, you know, kind of like stabbing in the dark from the back end, from the back side, because you don't really know where it's going to be, and it's not always going to be perfect. Okay, so I'm not going to pull it all the way through because I want that tail. All right, so I have a pretty long tail here to work with. And then remember, it's back stitch, so I'm going kind of backwards, I guess you could say. And then I'm gonna go up about right here. We've got a lot of curves with this, so it might be a little bit more smaller stitches than the rest of the design. Oh, I don't know if I'm catching. All right, I'm gonna go back. Uh, feels a little loose. This one felt a little loose, so I tried to tighten it by pulling it on the back too. So, going back down, sorry. All right, I'm gonna go back down where that stitch ended. Pull through. <laughs> and then, now I'm gonna go over here for my next stitch. And you know, also, it doesn't, 
You don't have to follow these lines. You can do whatever you want. These really, when it comes to stitching, you can always change colors, change designs. You could even just draw on the felt with a, a Sharpie if you wanted to, to make your own design and not use paper, not transfer design, just stitch right on it. You don't even have to use one if you don't want to. And just free wing, freehand the stitches. Um, okay. So, just gonna end up going now all around the outline. And I'll, when I'm done, I'll meet you back here. Okay, so here we are. I did the outline of the whipped cream. That tail I had originally didn't catch too well. So I'm confident that as I do these waves that I'll get it secured. So I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm not going to try to make a knot or anything else. So I'm going to start at the bottom. This was my last stitch. So I'm going to start over here because it's closest to the last stitch. And I'm going to do the whole bottom row and work my way up. Probably zigzag left to right. So here we go. Um, I'm going to try to catch that close enough uh, for these waves. I'm not going to be very picky about getting them perfectly. Um, just as long as they look like waves, I guess, it's, I'll be okay. Oh, I didn't do a back stitch unless I did a forward stitch. Well, that's all right. I'll just start my next stitch with a back stitch. That's the great thing about this easy stitch. You can't really tell. <laughs> You're not gonna really be able to tell a mistake, especially from the back side. Um, so let's see, it ended here. So I'm gonna try to come around here. You know, it's gonna be a little fun going back and forth and trying to find all of the waves. They might come out a little Zigzaggy. Let's take a look at the sample and see how I did that. Oh, I did super tiny stitches. So, uh, this one might not come out quite as well, but that's okay. Um, this design was created by someone who lives in Illinois, in Geneva, actually. Um, her name is Molly Johansson, and her website is wild olive and she has a lot of free designs that she offers on her website and this was one of them and um she also posts for like spruce crafts and um i think it might be there's another website that she also posts free designs on um and there's just usually also a lot of different types of crafts like printables um i don't know if she does knitting or crocheting but she's known for these cute smiley designs and they make me happy and she's super nice so we'll be doing a lot of her designs and future stitching crafts so if you find that this wasn't too frustrating and your perfectionism didn't make you go bonkers then you should give the next few crafts we have a try and they'll be just as cute with her cute smiley faces. So I'm just gonna go and do the waves now. Okay, so I finished with all of those waves for my whipped cream and I just went and threaded some of the tail. Now I'm gonna give it a close trim. All right, in the beginning tail, I'll probably clean up too. So that is the back. Curious how I did before and after. And so now um, we would go ahead and start to peel off the paper. And I want to do that before we do the flex because I want the flex to stay confidently secured. They won't if being just like tiny little threads, they 
would probably be easily tugged out, be tugged out by that paper. So I'm gonna start making a loose piece in the paper. Some people don't. Uh oh, tugging a little too hard here. So it's like perforated now because of your stitches. So it should peel. It's not gonna peel as easily as like say tissue paper for those who are seasoned experienced stitchers. You know, tissue paper is very easy to peel away. Um, like patterns, pattern paper is like tissue paper. All right, so I think when I get to the whipped cream topping, I will probably want to get it damp and soak it. Um, you can hold down your stitches when you peel the paper. Um, see, it's a little stubborn to tear out. So maybe um, either pick at it with a needle and that could really take a long time. Or I can show you what happens when you soak it. Because this is really probably going to be the part that takes the longest as opposed to your stitching so and also you probably would feel a little um afraid of tearing out some of your stitches when you tug because it's a little more stubborn than that tissue paper pattern paper so all right i'm gonna go soak this we'll take a look afterwards okay so here we are with all of the paper dissolved i soaked it in cold water about five minutes uh it, the paper just dissolves it's it's pretty cool uh it's not completely dry so i can't see any of that paper under the stitches but they'll probably show up once it, they're dry i can see a little bit of residue left over as a matter of fact that i'm messing with the nail. So, um, I don't know if you can see, it, it just looks a little cloudy here instead of pure green, so I'm thinking that might be some of the paper left over. Um, okay, so I want to show you the stitch seed, and I came up through the back with a knot, and I'm just going to make a little tiny stitch. The stitch seed is random. Uh, think of sprinkles on a cupcake, just little tiny lines. And honestly, if you don't like French knots, if that was a little difficult for you, I would recommend just doing this all over the rest of your uh, latte drink. And it doesn't look like I pulled my thread all the way through. Okay, there we go. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and pull through to make some tiny stitches and I'm just going to do that all over my little latte. You could do cross stitch too, just little X's. I think with it being six threads, six stri uh, strands of thread that it would be a little hard to see them as X's and I think that you can see these clear enough. And compared to the uh, French knots, which are much more dimensional, uh, so this is flat like your threads. Oh, there's those French knot eyes popping out. And then here's the eyes and the French knot spices. It's more dimensional. You can feel a texture. And this is flat. So it's going to be quicker. And... Um, just as cute, I would say. So go ahead and just keep doing some seed stitches. And you'll probably find those less frustrating and just random place them and as many as you want. And my fingers are having trouble gripping because the bookmark is still damp. So you're gonna wanna make sure that that's completely dry before you continue with this. And my eye, I think also with all the, um, white thread in the back it's a little congested so i think popping the needle up through it might make it a little 
hard. So maybe if I just find some green areas for my stitches, I might have a little more ease at getting that eye through. Or it might just be too damp. In that case, you could probably just dry it with a hair dryer or let it air dry. <laughs> yeah, so tiny, tiny little stitches. All right, so that should be it for finishing your bookmark. Oh, I did want to show you, I did some fringe at the bottom of my bookmark just for something. You don't have to do that. You could design a little stitch pattern like X's or you could just outline all along the edge if you have enough thread left over um, or you can just leave it as is. You could probably even round the corners with some scissors if you'd like a softer edge on your bookmark. All right, well, I can't wait to see your bookmarks. So if you finish them, please send me pictures. My email is kpatton at shorewoodtroylibrary.org. That's K-P-A-T-T-O-N. Or you can send them to reference at shorewoodtroylibrary.org. But I would love to see them. Thank you.